The staff at OPC actually does two different kinds of rebuilding. One is prosthetics, the replacement of a missing limb. That's the territory of Elliot and his technician, Mark. Mark doesn't like the way something came out. He's the first one to throw it in the garbage. He'll trash it and start over. In any job, you have to earn the respect and work harder to, to prove that you can do it. I've worked very hard to show him what I can do. The second kind of rebuilding is called orthotics. Orthotics are external braces designed to strengthen or reinforce an existing limb. That's the specialty of Elliot's mother, Joan, and her technician, Angela. I want my braces to be, you know, somebody look at it and say, oh, that, that's good work. Sometimes, in very difficult cases, all four of these specialists must work together to meet the needs of a single patient. Morning. Good morning. You're going to see both John and Elliot? Right. OK, have a seat, and I'll be right with you. My name is Jessica Rogers, and I am eight and a half. I like sports. Swimming, track, and field are three events that I do as an athlete. Morning. You ready to try these new legs? Jessica's a very challenging patient for the staff at OPC because she suffers from a condition called lumbosacral agenesis, meaning neither her lower back nor her legs formed in the womb. It's an extremely rare condition affecting 1 in 25,000 children. Here we are. Jessica was born in Brazil and placed in an orphanage. But Phyllis Rogers found her and brought her to the United States when she was only a year old. We first came to see Elliot when she was about four years old or five years old because we were having trouble finding anyone who would even be able to um, make a set of prosthetic legs for her. I like Elliot because he is funny and I like the fact that he can fix my legs. And usually um, if we just tell him about something, he knows exactly how to fix it. Elliot has been unsuccessful in his two previous attempts to construct legs for Jessica, mainly because she lacks a lower torso, thus complicating her ability to stand up straight. I've been working with her for quite some time, but I haven't quite nailed it. And we think we're going to get it right today. If she tells him that she wants something, he makes it. And everything. Wait, what do you want? A horse. A horse. I think that's out of Elliot's league. But you can tell him about that when he comes back in, see what he can do. <laughs> because of her condition, the biggest challenge for Jessica is mobility. <laughs> well, next year. Simple tasks like climbing stairs can be troublesome. So Jessica has a variety of technological supports to help her get around. But Jessica's greatest source of support is not mechanical. It's her mother, Phyllis. A licensed sign language interpreter, Phyllis Rogers began adopting disabled children in 1987. Who would like to see this? Ooh. Angela? Thank you for the family. Thank you for our house. Thank you for the food. In Jesus' name, amen. Today, Phyllis has eight disabled children, including Jessica. Hopefully, growing up in this household, gives Jessica the stability and the connection that every child should have to be able to achieve to their highest potential. It's fun being in a big family because I have a lot of people to play with. It's hard sometimes because I'm smaller than everybody else and sometimes they're not paying attention to the way they're going and I end up getting squished. <laughs> but most of the time that doesn't happen, so that's a good thing. Phyllis caught her first glimpse of Jessica at a gathering for children and their adoptive parents. In a book featuring photographs of children needing homes, there was a snapshot of Jessica, still less than a year old. It was love at first sight. When I first saw her, it was obvious that she just had such a spark and such a personality. There was no doubt in my mind that she was going to be uh, my child forever. 
I wasn't sure cognitively where she was, um, even though I know she had a bright personality. Wasn't quite sure if there were going to be additional learning disabilities. I wasn't sure how far she could go physically. By the time she was two, she was talking, and by the time she was three, she was reading. <laughs> so there was no stopping her. Five years later, Jessica is a child of unlimited ambition. When I grow up, I want to be an inventor and invent different ways for people like me to get around easier. Water bottles, yay. This is my buggy that I will fix up in probably high school. And if I can, I'll make it fly. A flying buggy would be pretty cool because you could get to school faster and not have to take the bus. While a flying buggy would be fun, a more immediate form of transportation is long overdue. Jessica needs legs to feel like other third graders, and this challenge will require Elliot and Joan to combine their talents to build an apparatus that will work for her. As Elliot and Joan attempt to help Jessica find her footing, you think this will hold her in? The only way we're going to know is to try. A man who survived true horror is Elliot's most complicated project yet.